Okay, so I'm recording. All right, all right. Well, uh, wel welcome everybody to the conversa wonderful conversation we've already been having. <laughs> um, I'm here with Margaret Benefiel, who is the executive director of the Shalem Institute uh, in Washington, DC. And Shalem is very near and dear to my heart, as is Margaret. So uh, Shalem helped me really, in my own spiritual life, kind of discover the contemplative path that um, kind of is most closest to my heart um, in my own spiritual practice uh, many moons ago. And Margaret was actually my spiritual director when uh, we were both in the Boston area. We're both a little further south than we used to be. Uh, but at a very important time in my life, I have reached out to Margaret and asked if she'd be my spiritual director. And she, uh, she said yes and uh, really helped me discern God's sense of calling, uh, especially at a time of transition and discernment, which eventually brought me here to Upper Dublin. Uh, and uh, I was just now remembering, because Margaret were on this call, that um, when I moved here, we Skyped and did uh, a spiritual direction by Skype once I moved because we were in this process of discernment. And part of it was, well, now that you're there, how is God moving in your life? And But I just thought of that as we're kind of on the screen here together. So um, I'm really grateful to, to catch up and for Margaret's work. And um, there's more information on um, the sabbatical website about the books that she's written, which have also been really helpful for me. Um, and we're talking to Margaret today because Margaret walked the Camino de Santiago de Compostela earlier this year. So we're talking uh, now in November and you walked in September. Yes. Right. So just recently she and her husband Ken walked it and walked the exact same route that I'm going to be walking from Porto, Portugal up to Santiago. Um, and this is a series of conversations uh, that I would be having anyway myself with my friends about what should I know and how should I prepare and what did you learn? But we wanted to share those um, more broadly uh, with the congregation and people who might be following the project. So Margaret, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Keith. It's, it's an honor to be able to talk with you about this and share this with your congregation. And it's really fun to be together again in this way. And, and uh, so uh, fun to reconnect and the little catch up we just did a few minutes ago. And so it's, mm -hmm. uh, I, I thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I have some questions that uh, are on my mind as a future pilgrim of the Camino. And uh, I have I want to start off with just asking, um, what made you want to walk the Camino? What uh, drew you to, to make this journey? Well, I read a book by Joyce Rupp about 15 years ago called Walk in a Relaxed Manner, and mm -hmm. it's about her pilgrimage on the Camino. And when I read that, I thought, oh, I'd like to do that sometime. And so that's been in the back of my mind and in my heart for all these years. And then the opportunity presented itself and it seemed like the right time. And my husband mm. and I went. <laughs> I was also inspired by that book. Um, and was, we were talking earlier. I can't remember where the spark came from wanting to walk the Camino, though I do like walking and hiking and, and running. And, uh, I love anything that's, kind of medieval Christian kind of practice, which pilgrimage was such a big thing. But I do remember that book being like, oh, this is a possibility. And, uh, and, and she's just such a wonderful writer, um, kind of draws you in. Yeah. 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 Yes, she's, she does such a good job of connecting the actual physical pilgrimage, the external pilgrimage with the internal pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. and, what was going on inside her and and how God was at work in her life during the pilgrimage. And so mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, I know I love being outside. I love beautiful places. I love being with other people who want to do a spiritual pilgrimage. And mm -hmm. and so and plus I'd like to get in better shape and that's <laughs> Doesn't hurt, does it? Prepare for it, and as I do it, and <laughs> and I'd never been to Portugal or Spain, and mm. so mm. so all of those things uh, drew me. Yeah, um, one of the things that's appealing to me about it is the, as you were saying, like the embodied nature of the pilgrimage. So, like a, a lot of in Christianity, I think is around the thinking and feeling, right? And it's 
sometimes, even though it's a very incarnational religion, <laughs> like the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, <laughs> like we still, unless it's sitting, standing, or kneeling, sometimes we don't connect our physical bodies, our embodiedness with our faith and our spirituality. And this is hardwired into that pilgrimage experience. It's both. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And, and so um, what was it like being on the Camino um, day by day? How was that experience? <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you know, we did the Portuguese route. And so we started in Porto and then walked north. And the first, uh, it was two weeks um, for us. And and uh, walked north. And then the first, so the first week we were in Portugal. And the second week we were in Spain. Mm. And so uh, part of the time we were going through cities and part of the time we were out in the countryside. Hmm. So the days were very different depending on where we were. Hmm. And <clears throat> when we were out in the countryside, if we were staying overnight out in the countryside, we often stayed at an old villa. We actually, we stayed at B&Bs instead of in the hostels. And so one option, the hardcore way to do the Camino is, as you know, mm -hmm. is to carry everything on your back and do the whole 500 miles, start in the Pyrenees, the whole 500 miles and stay in the hostels, which are often dormitory rooms with lots of bunk beds in them and and we we did it the softer way we stayed in b and b's and we had our luggage carried from place to place mm -hmm. and so we were just carrying day packs okay. and so so that was easier mm -hmm. uh, and, and so uh, when we stayed in these villas in the countryside, our first night was in Porto, mm. and then the next night was one of these villas in the countryside. And mm. we got there, and I, I asked the woman uh, who was the proprietor how long she'd had this place, and she said, well, it belonged to my grandfather. Oh, wow. And she said, our family decided just a few years ago to open it up to pilgrims. Mm. And so we want it to be used and, and we want to support pilgrims. And, <laughs> and she was very warm and welcoming. And there were really nice touches like hand embroidered towels. And after dinner, she said, well, I made a cake. Would you like to eat some of the cake I made? And, mm. and so I felt the, uh, from the beginning, the kindness and support that I encountered time and again along the way. And so, and another place, I guess it was the next night after that, that we stayed was very similar. And when we got there, they said, would you like us to do your laundry? There's no charge. We'll do your laundry for you. So <laughs> laundry for free. And, and so, there was such an atmosphere along the way of uh, kindness mm. and support. And so the kindness of, of strangers was a big theme for me, mm. not only at the places we stayed, but also from other pilgrims that mm. people would help each other out. And I was one of the slower ones, you know, um, <clears throat> even though my husband and I did some training to get ready for it, we didn't do as much as we might have. And so, especially going up and down some of the big hills, I was uh, slower than some of the people. And so people would stop and walk with me and give me tips on how to use my, my poles or how to go down the hill so it wouldn't hurt my knees. And, mm -hmm. and, and um, just keep me company. There was one couple on the Camino we got to know who were actually reading Joyce Rupp's book along the way. And uh, so they were reading it out loud to each other every day. And so when I'd see them on the trail, I'd say, well, what did Joyce Rupp have to say today? And they would share that day's inspiration. Sorry about that. This is a, a school here and the kids are having recess. So um, all right. Every, every, everything everything belongs right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> very contemplative it's all part of the whole <laughs> yeah, a good time out there. <laughs> we have a nursery school here so it's bound to happen here anytime <laughs> so 
so hmm. yes the kindness of strangers the community of strangers uh hmm. those things stood out to me and then on the days we stayed in the city we we usually were in a, a hotel a modest hotel and so then we'd walk around the city and and we would often uh, end up at the same hotels or, or the same villas out in the countryside as other pilgrims. So mm-hmm. when we were out in the countryside, uh, dinner or breakfast was usually a fairly small group. And so, and, and the proprietors would be cooking for us or mm-hmm. bringing in food. And so a great opportunity to have conversation and mm-hmm. hear what everybody else's day was like. And, and to, to ask, well, what brought you to the Camino and, and share stories? And, and uh, so both the uh, physical tips, like what do you do when you get blisters and, and uh, spiritual stories. And, <laughs> uh, so how, what's happening for you spiritually on the Camino? And how does the physical connect with the spiritual? And uh, so, so, uh, the days uh, and and the rhythm of the days was that um, usually we'd start walking fairly early in the morning when it was cool. Hmm. We thought the second half of September would be cooler than it was, but there ended up being a, a heat wave, so oh. the usual temperatures for that time of year. Hmm. So we tried to get as much walking in as we could when it was cooler, and then and then uh, relax in the afternoon. I could really understand the tradition of the siesta, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Walk until about one o'clock and then have lunch and then have a rest. And then if we hadn't finished, uh, walk the rest of the way for that day. Okay. Try to Hmm. to get the walking in while it was cool. Yeah. Uh, When I talked with uh, Bill Miller about his experience, uh, earlier in the summer, he he sort of said his part of his advice to me was, um, "You're probably going to think a lot about the physical part, about what you need to bring and pack." And he said, "Don't neglect the spiritual part. You know, kind of like the spiritual preparation to really be open to what God is, might be saying to you on the out on the Camino." Yeah. Yes, I think that's great advice. And you know, I had thought before I went well. It's going to be easy to pray because I'll be out in beautiful nature and 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 be with all these spiritual people who are who are prayerful as we go and and I had brought along prayer requests from people. I I had promised to pray for people in the coming mm-hmm. and uh, and so I uh, I'll admit I <clears throat> spent an embarrassing amount of time focused on what parts of my feet were hurting and what remedies I would try that night when we got back to the place we were staying. (laughs) And then, and then secondly, uh, focused on what did the last kilometer marker say? uh, And, and how many more kilometers to go did we have that day? (laughs) I had to be just as intentional about prayer on the Camino as I do in my ordinary life. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't just immediately drawn into the depths Mm. of prayer. (laughs) There should be some prayers for one's feet. (laughs) Like that's what Bill was saying too. And were there um, any um, sp- particular highlights for you, um, places or experiences along the route that just uh, continue to stand out for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, one was that place where they said, can we do your laundry? And <laughs> we did laundry and brought it back. And, you know, those uh, simple things like, laundry and, and uh, uh, a good bed and, and uh, good food are, are very important uh, when one is out all day. And uh, <clears throat> another highlight was there was one, one place where we climbed, a, they called it a mountain. It was pretty high. I had thought, 
uh, that the part we were going on wasn't going to have too many hills or any mountains. And mm -hmm. this one was, was uh, I'd say, a small mountain. And um, so, and it had heated up, so we were hot. And, and, um, and we got up to the top, and there was a little food truck there out in the middle of nowhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> called the wolf maybe it'll be there when you're there too. and uh, so they somehow found a road to drive it in and they had three uh, hot sandwiches as options and cold drinks and so uh, we sat there and uh, they had little plastic tables and chairs out and we got something to eat and and sat there and ate out in the beautiful um, <clears throat> mountaintop with, you know, shaded by trees. And, and uh, so one of those Portuguese pork sandwiches had never tasted so good. <laughs> so, so that was a highlight. <laughs> Another highlight was we ended up at a little cafe one day with some other pilgrims who had we gotten to know along the way and and we didn't all know we'd be there at the same time but we ended up sitting around a table and and talking and and eating and and then the proprietor came out with a blackboard and um and poked one of the people in our group with a walking pole and said pay attention and he then he used the walking pole as a pointer and gave us a lesson on what we needed to do and see in the next two towns and we were almost at the end then so part of it included santiago de compostela mm -hmm. and he was a real character and so we learned a lot from him about the local areas and mm -hmm. what to do and and so that was really fun to get to know uh, him a little bit and to get a local person's mm. um, experience mm. he was actually canadian french oh. canadian and had ended up there and had this little cafe and so of course his english was very good and mm. he, he liked telling uh camino pilgrims all his knowledge and uh, <laughs> so so that was another highlight mm. and then um uh highlight at the end was of course getting to the cathedral yeah. and uh going to the pilgrim's mass mm. and it was very powerful the the cathedral is huge and it was packed standing room only wow. at the time we were there about 2,000 pilgrims a day were entering Santiago de Compostela wow. from the different routes, you know, not all from the route we were on. Mm -hmm. So, but still, that's, uh, that's quite a few pilgrims. Yeah. And, and so uh, there were several masses a day and two of them were pilgrims masses. And mm -hmm. So we were there and and most of it I couldn't understand because I only know a few words of Spanish, but but it got to the Gloria and everyone almost everyone was singing the Gloria together from you know, people from all over the world, different languages and everybody knew the Gloria in Latin and the tune and that was very moving and, and uh, it brought tears to my eyes and I felt connected with all these pilgrims who had come from all over and, and walked all those miles. And, and then at the end, at the end, uh, they sang Ubi Caritas and the same thing. Everybody, almost everybody joined in and it was that sense of connection and, and unity and uh, yeah. And the community of strangers, and and so very powerful, and uh, and then they swung that huge sensor that uh, they have there, and, and so that was quite amazing. Too. So that pilgrim mass was was mm. a highlight. Mm. And, oh wow! Yeah, I should be if I'm on track for my walk. I should arrive on Saturday, and then be able to to be there. I think for the for a pilgrim mass and then be able to worship there on Sunday right. morning as well. The, the timing just works out well that I can be there for that and then come back to Porto. I think Monday to meet the, my family who's flying over then. So right. yeah, I hopefully get a couple of worship services in at the cathedral. 
<laughs> yeah, it'll be perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I wonder, as um, you know, as um, a spiritual teacher and a spiritual director, um, I just think you would have a unique perspective to, you know, I, I don't know quite how to ask the question because it, um, it's just so part of who you are, but, and, and maybe you've answered it already, but just as a spiritual teacher and director, you're, um, did you gain any insights in terms of like, I guess the work that you do in directing or teaching that you've, or your work at Shalane that have kind of integrated into, or maybe it's still so early, but you see ways in which that's becoming part of your work. That's a great question. You know, part of it uh, for me was reflecting on the physical and how spiritual direction so often is done just sitting in a room inside and how different it is to be outside and experiencing creation and also then walking and, and feeling the um, both the joy and the pain of the experience of walking and um, and reflecting on I, I guess the the first thing that came to me is I, I lead a pilgrimage co-lead a pilgrimage in Assisi every year mm. and so there's that experience of, of being outside and walking and and um, and reflecting on how can we um, how can we talk more about the experience of the body and St. Francis and how he and his brothers walked, they would walk to their mountaintop retreat centers and they walked from Assisi to Rome to see the Pope and, you know, they didn't have the kind of nice shoes and socks that I had that I had researched carefully. And, you know, they, they had probably kind of ordinary leather sandals and 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 what was that like for them to do that walking and did they all walk at the same pace or maybe they had different paces like the pilgrims and I who were on the road and yes. and so how did they work that out and what if somebody got tired before they were to their destination if some wanted to walk longer in a day so it's it's made me reflect on our Assisi pilgrimage and how we talk about Francis and Claire and and how we walk as pilgrims and and what we might uh, add to that how how we could add some reflections in mm -hmm. and, and, um, and maybe even while we're walking or or we do a walk and then we stop and reflect uh, along the way or mm. so that's that's the most immediate um, reflection that I've had mm. um, and at Shalane we do integrate body prayer into our uh, into our courses and and uh, so it made me think more about that and, and how else could we do that? And maybe some, some walking meditation outside that we sometimes do. How could we expand that? So, yeah, I'm still, I'm still in process with that. But that's a great question. Um, when the, I, one of the Shalim retreats I did years ago, um, probably 10 years ago, was the Personal Spiritual Deepening Program. And uh, it was at this beautiful retreat center in Maryland and uh, just lots of fields and outdoor space and a creek. And I just remember just, we just had hours and hours of silence, you know, the part of the 24 hours, uh, full 24 hours of the retreat was silent. And I remember using that time just to walk all around the landscape and the, and the walk, walking helps me to kind of work out my nervous energy, you know, to kind of settle. And then you find, a, and for me, like to find a rhythm, but then just the invitation on those retreats um, to notice and to pay closer attention. And, um, and I still have a rock and I was actually wondering if I still had it right here, but I had a, of a rock that I found on one of that retreat 10 years ago. 
<laughs> and it was a, on the creek bed and it's a, just a stone and it has like a just an indent in it that looks like a heart oh. like a naturally occurring you know indent oh. and, uh, and uh, it sits up uh, usually on my window shelf oh. and still reminds me of the that that time but um, yeah yeah for me I if I'm not outside, if I'm, you know, running for me is as much about being outside as the running itself. Uh, and as, as I get older, it's more about the being outside than the running. <laughs> it's certainly not about the speed. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so. Yes, I'm, I'm like you, you know, when I'm walking, it's um, sometimes I walk and pray or walk and think or walk and think and pray and that helps me get more get rid of some of that nervous energy and get more grounded and and uh, kind of keep moving in my prayers keep moving in my thoughts um, mm -hmm. whereas if I just sit still sometimes I have trouble focusing and so yeah. the uh, the walking helps me move with, I think, with the spirit's movement and listen. And uh, so, yes, that's that's helpful to me too. Yeah, yeah, and I think in some ways it's it's. I mean, and um, like I took up yoga at some point over the last year, mainly for you know to for stretching and for kind of overall well being and um, and the the. The physicality of that experience was surprisingly powerful. I was kind of doing it, you know, kind of as a stretching routine and just doing different videos and stuff. But the spiritual aspect of the physically moving and the breathing and the, um, it was like now, I, you know, kind of got why people are so devoted to it. But um, what a great lesson that was for me of the kind of the body and the breath and, and the spirit and the, you know, quiet, quieter time. What a gift that is. Yeah. And the walking is, you know, also something that people can do anywhere. So, um, because in one sense, pilgrimage is like, you can go, like I'm, you can go to Europe and you can walk an ancient route and you can do that. But like walking is something we can do anywhere, you know, um, can walk on the at the local park and bring the same kind of sense of attentiveness and noticing or paying attention to your breathing or um, praying at different, you know, praying at, at uh, the mile markers or the quarter mile markers. <laughs> you know, like it's not, you don't have to go to Portugal or Spain right. to have that kind of experience. Right. right. And I think that's part of the project for me is that's exactly the kind of thing that I want to lift up before I go or bring back is that, you know, you don't have to do what I did. You could go down to, we have the watershed that has these amazing trails and do that. Um, so, yeah. And I love how, uh, when you talked about your highlights, how it was the personal interactions and the kind of everyday moments and hospitality and welcome and grace that, you know, because you read the guidebooks or you read the blogs and you have to hit this church and this cathedral and, you know, like this kind of ancient thing. And it's like, uh, you know, it's the kind of everyday moments, which then allow you to reflect on your everyday right. experiences in the relationships. And it's not so, not so foreign, you know, you don't have to be a 600 year old church to right. find God. <laughs> you, can do it, you can do it in place. <laughs> I loved those churches along the way too. Those yeah. were wonderful. And yeah. we go there and then they'd stamp our pilgrim passports yeah. to show we've been there. And that's cool. That was great. And and those everyday things were what stood out to me a lot. Another one, another another highlight was uh, when we were walking through the countryside, we were going through a farm fields. There these paths went through people's fields and <laughs> So, and a farmer came out with two big red ripe tomatoes and gave them to my husband and me. Aww. And it was a beautiful sunny day and the tomatoes were, you know, they looked like uh, like sunshine in, uh, <laughs> in food form. And there was a picnic table right there. So we sat down and ate them and they were really refreshing. And mm. 
was just what we needed to get us through the last little bit of that day's walking. And so that was another highlight. Mm, mm, I love it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I can, the way you describe it, I can picture the tomato. Just <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Well, Margaret, thank you so much for taking the time to share your experience with me. And it's, uh, I, I'm looking forward to it even more now. And I feel like I'll be more attentive to the smaller moments <laughs> and not just the, the great cathedrals, but all the moments in between. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for our friendship and for your sharing. You're welcome, Keith. I'm very grateful too, and for our friendship and for uh, this opportunity to talk about the Camino. And I hope you have a wonderful experience, whatever it, you know, whatever it is that's right for you, and the, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, like the connection with nature. Uh, may it all be graced. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>